this is a headline you could never buy. Uh, 1976, the Boston After Dark people gave us the cover. And with a headline like that, New England's biggest club is not in Boston. That's right. It was in Willimantic. This parking lot behind the East Brook Mall is where the Shabu Inn once stood. What a center of rock and roll history. If you wanted to go from being a who to being a who's who back in the 70s, you had to come here. David Foster was there. After all, his family built it, along with the John family, in 1971. But why name it the Shabu? So uh, the Johns being Lebanese, they said, how about Shabu, Shabu? It's a, it's a Lebanese word. And we go, well, what does it mean? You really want to know? I said, yeah, what does it mean? It means what's wrong with you. Perfect. Let's name it Shabu. And with that, music's landscape quickly changed. The second week, for four nights, we had Aerosmith. They show up in a school bus. <laughs> and they have the spandex pants on. And, you know, they singing stone songs they, that sounded great. And then they sing the song that they wrote. We'd like to introduce this song. We just, we just wrote it. It's called Dream On, their first big hit. The first place they ever played it was at Shabu. Within weeks, word was getting out. To keep the acts big, they went to Chicago and booked every blues act they could. They all played the Shabu. Howlin' Wolf, you know, Bo Diddley, James Cotton, Freddie King, Albert King, B.B. King, Bobby Bland. And they would come and, to Willamette. And play all week long. Next thing you know, the big ambitious joint in the small town of Wilmantic was getting huge responses. Companies representing rockers from everywhere started taking notice of this little club in Wilmantic. They noticed it from the from the from the so-called rags, like the Hartford Advocate, New Haven Advocate, which we advertise religiously in every week. And they said, "Look, what this place in Wilmantic? Look what they're booking. You know, nobody in the whole state's booking this level." You go. Let's sell them, call them up. Let's sell them some contemporary stuff. Sell them Tower of Power. Sell them Dr. John. And then, you know, all of a sudden, uh, Premier Talent's going, they saw the same thing. They said, you know, uh, sell them Rick Derringer. Sell them, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, Manfred Mann's Earth Band. I mean, sell them some rock stuff, you know. All of a sudden, we had you know, Ed, Edgar Winter, Johnny Winter, Rick Derringer, Danny Hartman. We, I mean, we had everybody. All of a sudden, you're competing with the big boys in L.A. and New York and Chicago. But you're in Willimantic. How did that happen? They needed a place in between those markets. It was a, it was a perfect rooting date. And so Willimantic gets put on a map as a rock and roll cornerstone. Don't believe me? More Hall of Famers played the Shabu Inn than the other big clubs in the entire country. How yeah. many? 25. How many have played the bottom line? Four. How many have played the Troubadour? Six, maybe. <laughs> what did you do right that they didn't do? Well, we had a lot more capacity, so they could earn a lot more money. There is nobody from the 70s rock blues landscape that if you wanted to be somebody, you played the Shabu. Pictures of the greats line Foster's office. This is a picture of uh, myself, Muddy Waters, and my drummer, Jackie Scarangella, in the dressing rooms at, at Shabu. When did he play there? He played there, he started playing there in 72 and played there for about eight or nine years. And Foster, now 70, remembers them all. Cavalier, Tower of Power, uh, Charlie Daniels, Journey, The Police, Elvin Bishop, uh, and, Dire Straits. And you've got stories about Cheap all Cheap Tricks, every one of them. The Shabu Inn's heyday lasted until the early 80s when the music landscape changed again thanks to a little TV channel getting in the way. MTV was coming in, and it was very powerful. People were just watching videos at home, and they just said, hey, you know, I can, I can watch MTV at home, you know? Wow, so video killed the radio star, but MTV killed the Shabu. They were supposed to sell the building in 82. The door shut on May 13th, but three months later, as it was about to be sold to the mall next door, it burned to the ground. But what should have been an ending opened up another chapter. A band of rock legends, the Shabu All-Stars, kept the name alive. What it was, we were just delivering a monstrous musical show in the bar rooms all over, all over New England and, and, and the country. Which is why now, 50 years later, the Shabu Inn lives on. Every year in Wilmantic, on the Shabu stage, donated by Foster, plays home to a homecoming of sorts. Hearing the name Shabu, 
conjures up a lot of wonderful memories for a lot of people, and that's got to make you feel good. Their memories are just, they're cemented. I mean, because the, the people that went there, they, they'd never seen anything like it. They used to have to come just for a dose. I mean, it was like going to church. And so even though time has changed the landscape of where the Shabu Inn once stood, it's not forgotten. And Willimantic's place in rock and roll history, that's cemented too. Two guys who had no idea at the beginning what a force they would become oh, yeah. for the rock and roll landscape. Well, we never knew. It would, it would grow to this level, you know what I mean? In Willimantic. I know. You gotta be proud of that. I'm really proud of it. And, and, and it's, it's a source of history now. We're not just a thread city, we're a music city. Mm -hmm. And we are. I'm Matt Scott, Fox 61 News.